Hello everybody and welcome to this interview. We've got with us today Lee May from uh, Defiant uh, Development. He's uh, one of the team that's been looking after Hand of Fate 2, which was a great game. Is a great game, sorry. It's, I'm still playing it. Uh, and it's just about to get an uh, endless mode. Hi Lee, how Thank are you? you Bray. <laughs> hey Matt, thanks for having me. No problem. So um, yeah, tell us about uh, the endless mode in Hand of Fate 2 because it was definitely one of my favorite features about the original Hand of Fate. Uh, what's changed about it and what can we expect from it? Um, I guess to begin with, the fact that it exists is kind of a, a big deal. Um, endless mode was added to the first game as kind of an afterthought. Um, we didn't really know what to expect of it and yet it became like, one of the most beloved aspects certainly by our hardcore fans. Um, when we came to designing the second game, we had a, the idea was that we would just kind of push ourselves with each of the challenges to try and take the Hand of Fate uh, basic structure into, off into interesting areas. So we had a couple that felt more like board games, a couple that felt more like sort of mysteries, things like that. Um, and uh, there were two challenges in there that initially were meant to kind of occupy the same space as Endless, and that was the wheel and the tower. Um, but uh, for various reasons, you know, they, they still serve as, as kind of an infinite version of the game, but they're not quite uh, what people wanted with Endless. Um, and uh, so we've been working on making something that... Um, it turns out it actually feels like the purest expression of the way that Hand of Fate functions. Um, so uh, in the new version of the mode, you're actually going on a series of uh, these randomly generated quests, and you can choose to take on additional trials for greater rewards but also greater risk. Uh, it's really, really, really fun. I've been playing it nonstop since we, uh, we first started testing it. So was there always the intention to add uh, Endless Mode to Hand of Fate 2? Um, because obviously the game's out, so this has been added in afterwards. Yeah, I think it came about um, uh, towards, the, I guess, the middle of the development. We, we realized that people were going to want it as a distinct mode, um, and, but we, we weren't quite sure what kind of shape it would take for quite a while. Uh, we had to wait to see how people were already playing the game before we, we could figure out how to, to best cater to that audience. Uh, so I guess initially we, I think we sort of hoped that uh, it would be captured within the, the game modes that we have in our challenges and then realized that it wasn't, it wasn't quite catered to within that, that subset of games. Sure. What do you think it is about endless modes that appeal to people? Um, I guess it's like the, the core concept is that it's a video game that you never have to stop playing is very appealing, right? Uh, <laughs> like I play a lot of... Um, I really get into a lot of open worlds or like long-form RPGs and the closer I get to the end, the, the more hesitant I am to actually play them. You know, because... I, you know, generally you get into that groove where you just don't ever want that experience to stop. Uh, and so the I, I think the appeal here is that, that that never happens. You are always being told to go off and do more quests and gather more loot and more people are telling you that you're a great hero. Uh, and I think there's there's something very, um, very comforting in that. But then conversely, uh, it's, you know, it's an obvious challenge and it ramps up on itself. It's, it's something that's designed to uh, be, you know, that kind of hardcore experience for the the serious gamer, as it were. So it's something that both feels comfortable, but is also mean and and punishing. <laughs> sure, sure. So I remember from the um, the original Hand of Fates uh, Endless Mode. Uh, if I was to have a criticism of it, it felt like mm -hmm. it was too easy for too long and then all mm. of a sudden you'd hit a wall and you'd just fall over <laughs> almost immediately afterwards there was a very and it, it obviously depended on how um how much you'd played and uh, how skilled you were and the cards that you were able to take into the game and all that kind of stuff mm. 
but uh, there, there was definitely a point where you'd hit a wall and it just become impossible to get any further. Um, and then you'd obviously have to restart all the way from the beginning again. Have you worked hard to uh, balance out that difficulty curve with the endless mode this time around? Yeah, it's always hard to tweak the the difficulty curve, but it's something that we're quite uh, quite sensitive to here. I think we're still working on fine tuning it. We've got a lot of people who feel like it's getting a pretty good balance for the the standard player. But anyone who's super hardcore, we have one member of our community who has been in every single beta test who responds to you know all of our our outreach activities. They just absolutely adore the game. And uh, he emailed me directly the other day to say that he didn't think it was possible for him to die in this mode, that he had just <laughs> had hundreds of thousands of points. So we, we can't quite balance the game for him yet, but uh, anyone who isn't like superhumanly good at Hand of Fate is probably going to be able to feel pretty pretty satisfied with the the bludgeoning that they receive in this mode. Sure, sure. And I remember seeing tweets from you about naming bosses for the Endless Mode. Does that mean that it'll have a whole bunch of new boss fights, or is it kind of reskinned existing character models and, and stuff? Um, mostly uh, reskinned character models. There's a couple of um, new scenarios. There'll be, there's at least, I think there are two new boss types that haven't been seen before in this mode so far, and there'll be more down the track as well. We have another enemy faction that we're introducing later on for free and um, we'll be integrating them into Endless. It's very exciting to see what happens with those guys because they're very, very different to everything that we've got but that has come before, which is nice. Sure. And did you end up taking my suggestion of uh, calling one of the bosses Bossy McBoss fight face? Uh, no, I, uh, I did not do that because it's a terrible idea. Uh... I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm hurt. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. Not happening. <laughs> Next time. Hand of Fate 3. Yeah. The exactly. Fi the final boss will be exactly. bossing with boss face. That'll be perfect. <laughs> um, speaking more generally about Hand of Fate, one of the things that I've really noticed is that nobody's really tried to copy you, <laughs> which, which is... Um, which is fascinating because obviously the original Hand of Fate was a big success and people loved it and it got, you know, good write-ups from everywhere and you know, it, it has a really good reputation. Um, mm. And usually you find when an indie developer as such does a really good job with a game, everybody's th falling over themselves to take elements off it. Um, why do you think that nobody would try to try to do what Hand of Fate 2 or Hand of Fate has been doing? Um, I, I guess it's because we've created the hard mode version of this kind of game, maybe. Uh, <laughs> like there are a, a couple of games that are sort of in the same hybrid space that we're in um, and are doing really well as a result of it. I think uh, you look at the success of the recent Slay the Spire, which uh, came out in early access around the same time that we released and is doing tremendously well. Um, and, and with good reason, um, it has a lot of the same kind of choose your own adventure style things that that we have been ripping off for years um, and uh, has a card based element but it uses those in very very different ways I guess um, the way that we have done this game means that uh, you, know, you could do a hybrid um, in a similar fashion but it would be quite overt uh, and quite obvious if you were to, to rip it off, whereas the, uh, the individual components um, that our game is made up from are much easier to, to crib from, mm. if you get what I mean. Sure. I guess, you know, we, we don't really... The, the new thing that we have done with Hand of Fate is by combining these known elements together um, and there's no real point in other people necessarily making that exact same connection. You know, there's, there's more success to be found in, in doing a, a similar kind of hybrid, but, but combining different things in, in different ways. Sure, sure. 
when you say that your your games are hybrid, I think that's a, a bit of an understatement <laughs> because there's <laughs> so many different bits in it. You know, you get kind of a, a tarot theme, you get choose your own adventure, you get board game mechanics, you've got the the Batman style action system. It's it's amazing how you've been able to draw so many different themes and, and so many different mechanics together and still somehow make it all very cohesive. Um, how did you go about testing all of that and figuring out what worked well together? <laughs> uh, I think it was a lot of uh, a lot of trial and error, really. The um, <laughs> the origin for Hand of Fate is a really interesting one because you sort of assume that uh, it, it would be born out of you know, wanting to sort of make a digital board game or wanting to to see those things, and obviously that's. You know, we are hugely interested in in board gaming um, as a space. Our our office is just like stacked up with like, all kinds of board games, both popular and obscure. But um, the concept actually came about as a uh, result of uh, a mobile title that we made called um, Heroes Core um, several years ago, and um, so that was a a uh, Diablo-like game that had a lot of randomization in it that no one ever saw. No one, People would play through it, they'd play through the game once and be like, that was good, and not realize that we had generated so much of this game and this experience for them. And we really wanted to be rewarded for this cool system that we had made, right? Like, <laughs> people should applaud our awesome like random scenario generation. So we needed to put that into the forefront. Um, we're trying to think of ways that we could have, uh, a, you know, a, a game randomly generate itself, but in a way that drew attention to itself, but also gave the player agency. And that's sort of when we settled upon cards. Um, and since then, I think you know, most of the the hard work with balancing all of those different elements is purely down to having to do a lot of internal play testing. And whether we actually landed that balance or not is. Uh, really more up to the to the audience and they would say no absolutely not we have not but that's fine that's that's the the idiosyncratic nature of the game I think. <laughs> so how is um how would you say your community has kind of responded to hand of fate 2 as opposed to the original uh, have you been happy with the results and how people have found it yeah yeah i think um you know, people are responding really well to it um we have a very dedicated fan base. Um, they've been, you know, riding along with us since the, the launch of the first game, and I think most people are really satisfied with the, the way that we have evolved the game. Uh, we recently released modding tools to allow people to make their own challenges and encounters and scenarios and things, and that's been really fun to watch. Um, we're hoping that we'll we're going to have a, an update on the mod tool soon that will give our modders some unique content that isn't available anywhere else in the game, um, and that will be really fun to watch. But I think um, the people really really like what we're putting putting out. You know, we um, there's a very interesting game that I think a lot of people weren't expecting that they've been waiting their whole lives for. Um, Whenever we take the game, or when we would take the game to conventions, these like just you know, gentle people would approach me and just be like, "I have like this is my favorite game. I never knew that this is exactly what I wanted, and it's all I play now. This is this is thing for me, and that's that's really wonderful." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's right. I, I don't think before I played Hand of Fate, I would have thought that it would even work as a game. Um, so talking about the original one, obviously, and then after I played through that, I, I couldn't have been more excited for the sequel. Um, talk, looking looking at the game, obviously you've got Endless Mode coming. Is that mm -hmm. going to be it for Hand of Fate 2 in terms of, you know, kind of major new features and things like that? Uh, will you be looking to whatever's next um, after that? We uh, actually have a number of additional pieces of downloadable content in the works. Okay. Um, these will be um, they'll be proper paid expansions. Um, so they will 
in most cases they'll have a, a new challenge, which will be a full-length series of encounters, new cards that can fold into your deck, new story stuff. And they'll generally have one or two other elements with them as well. Um, so they'll most of them have a new companion. Uh, they might also have some new artifacts or new types of of interactions, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so there's, there's some really fun stuff in the future uh, coming up. Uh, and then we've got, I think there's, there's three or four of those, and there's also smaller content drops along the way. Uh, and after that, we're going to sort of reassess and see if there's enough uh, enthusiasm to pursue more more content, which I hope there is, because um, I really want them to let me go wild and, uh, and do something rather than just the punch-up writing, which is what I tend to do at the moment. Sure, sure. Have you ever thought about potentially um, uh, using this as a, a platform for licensed stuff? Um, one of the things, this probably sounds weird, but as I was playing it, uh, as I play Hand of Fate, I, I kind of think that it would morph across a whole range of different franchises quite well, in the sense, the same sense that kind of Koei's uh, Dynasty Warriors series works when adapted to, to other properties. Um, would would that be something that you guys would be interested in if there was some kind of franchise that wanted to adopt your kind of storytelling approach? Uh, yeah, I think we would be. We've, we've long talked about the idea of spinning Hand of Fate off into being a, a genre in and of itself, uh, in the same way that the, the, the Dynasty Warriors games are now they're just a type, right? Mm. Um, and internally, we've discussed things like the the weird Western or doing using it to tell like a, a mafia story. But um, I think if the right franchise came along, if it was a property that we were all really excited about, then then we might uh, take a look at that. Um, it'd have to be really be the right deal though, because you know we've worked with licensed properties in the past. We um, when, you know we we had Steve Safari early in our career, and we we spun that off to have an Adventure Time variant that was hugely popular and, and uh, you know that was a really fun uh, project there but um, it would have to be definitely have to be the right property but I think we're, we're open to that idea I, I at one point I, uh, I did mention a few potential um, uh, licenses to a uh, creative director or our game runner as he is now Morgan and um, the things that I suggested he liked it, but they, he said they, they weren't big enough for us to, <laughs> to want to uh, not develop our own, our own stuff. So it would have to be like something that, that we really, really like and something that we think will, will bring our own audience over. Sure, sure. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to, to chat to you about with regards to Hand of Fate. Uh, when, when does the um, Endless Mode come out? When is that due for release? Uh, so it is about a month away at this point. We are halfway through doing, no, not halfway through. We're, we're, we're doing beta testing at the moment with uh, members of our community. Uh, once that's wrapped up, it will be um, looking around April-ish, end of April, I think, for uh, the release date. Um, and there will be a console version of Endless shortly after that. Nice. Very soon. That's exciting. Well, best of best of luck with it, and I'm sure it'll be great. And I'm looking forward to the console version. I'll give it a good run, and I'm sure I'll let you know what I think of it. Um, thanks very much for your time, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, speak soon. I'm sure. Thanks, Matt. It's great.